light illumination let me show you a scripture i hope you're not tired of standing habakkuk chapter 3 please give it to us habakkuk chapter 3 we will read from verse 2 and 3 habakkuk are we there verse 3 let me see 3 there's a scripture i'm looking for that just came to my spirit it says god came from taman and the holy one from mount paran his glory covered the heavens and the earth was full of praise read verse 4 if you're a christian and his brightness was as the light and he had horns coming out of his hands and there was the hiding place of his power amplified says in that light that came out from his hand is the hiding place god's power has a location it is hidden in light that when light comes illumination is the hiding place of his power so when light is dispensed not it is not just the word of god that blesses no satan is not afraid of the word of god the bible says the sower sowed and it was satan that came to pick the word he met the word personified himself and did not run away it is the effect the illumination that the word brings upon a man that is a threat to the devil number three every time we gather like this it is important for us to give the holy spirit an opportunity to make manifest the glory of god of his people in miracles in signs wonders miracles are proof of the love of god they are also proof of the might of god the experience of the kingdom is such that you are not just supposed to believe alone you can taste and see that the lord is good there is an experience please listen carefully there is an experience in the dealings of god hallelujah the fourth thing that we expect in atmospheres like this is impartation. Impartation is not just anointing with oil. Impartation is not just falling down and standing up. Impartation is a transference of spiritual possibilities. That means that dimensions that have not yet been captured in your experience when you sit in an atmosphere like this because you see the results that your life commands is a report card it tells us the kind and the level of grace that is upon you so when god wants to change your life having supplied you the truths he will grant you access to the empowerment the grace of god an opportunity to produce results that only god can produce hallelujah the grace of God works like money. Just because you have it does not mean you can buy everything. You can only buy what is at the level of that amount. Are we together? Listen, if you have a thousand rand, a thousand rand can buy you a good meal, but it may not buy you a car. So if your need is a good meal, then you have enough. If your need is a car, you will need more of the same thing. So the Bible says grace and peace can be multiplied. Hallelujah. And then number four, the Bible says how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. And then he begins to paint a picture. He says their dwelling together is in the similitude of something that happens in the priesthood of Aaron. Like the oil that comes from his head to his bed to his skirt. And then the Bible says there not in that location in that state god has commanded the blessing so are you ready to pray one more time lord give me an encounter tonight lift your voice house of treasures lift your voice south africa let's call upon the god of all flesh for truly you will never be the same Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.
Thank you. Please be seated. Let's get to the word and let's see what we can do. Please, I'd like you to be sensitive while I teach. Spiritual communications are not a lecture. A lecture stops at the realm of your mind. The word of God is able to transit beyond your mind and create an impact in your spirit. Ezekiel chapter 2 and verse 1. He said unto me, stand up upon your feet. But he didn't have the energizing to stand. And then verse 2 says, and the spirit entered into me and set me upon my feet. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. There's so much to talk about. Wherever we stop tonight, we share the grace and continue. Amen. Third John, let's start with the epistle of John. Now, John, theologically speaking, was a very interesting apostle of the Lamb because um, John had a very unique understanding about the ways of God. You would notice that every time John began his discourse, in his knowledge of God and of the kingdom, he would always trace it back to the beginning. John 1 verse 1, in the beginning. All other apostles approached it from a historic standpoint. Are we together? Uh, or from um, a, a human standpoint. They would usually start with stories of the birth, the virgin birth, the trouble that came. But it was John who sustained an intelligence that was beyond the human realm. When he started the book of John, he said, in the beginning. He went back to the beginning. And when he started his epistle also, he said, this is the record. This is the message we have heard from the beginning. So John was a very interesting apostle. He was the one who opened us in detail to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. His synoptic version of the walk of the Christ upon the earth captured very richly all other gospels matthew mark and luke didn't do justice in opening us up to the ministry of the holy spirit but it was john who dedicated chapters 14 15 16 to open the body of christ for instance to the ministry of the holy spirit so john is speaking here third john 1 will start from verse 2. let's read together please one to read Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth. One more time, please. Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as thy soul. Help us, Holy Spirit. Now, the latter part is my concern tonight, and that is the title of my teaching tonight, Even as thy soul prospereth. Hallelujah. When Jesus walked the earth, he began to challenge the government of the day. He introduced to them a dimension of spiritual reality that challenged the status quo of that day. Hallelujah praise the lord until then the council were religious people who were concerned about the rituals as given to them as they had kept and here comes this young man in fact it is very interesting because at age 12 we see jesus submitting himself to mentorship learning under the scribes the pharisees and then theologically speaking for 18 years we do not hear about jesus again we do not know where he went to and then there are all kinds of suggestions. But the next time we see this young man that the Bible calls the word of God, he's age 30 and he's on his way to the Jordan. Are we still together? And then John is baptizing and John looks at him and says, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. John looks at him prophetically. This was the guy that I've been waiting for. I hope you know that baptism was a formula to help him identify the Christ. That's why he stopped the moment he found Jesus. There was no record of him baptizing again. So it was a spiritual formula that was given to him. So he would baptize and look up. The heavens would not open. He says, you can go. He would baptize, look up, and then he sees this strange man. And then prophetically 
he said i am not even worthy to untie the latchet of your shoe and jesus said permit it to be so you see that this i can stay there and teach all night because even the word walked under a close heaven for 30 years the logos of god personified his heavens did not open because he was the word it took a man to cause his heavens to be open this already is a message for a man of god it may be the reason you can be anointed as you are 30 years the word filled with the i mean i mean the 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 scripture and the logos of god and yet his heavens remain closed and god is watching until he comes to this strange man called elijah elijah is hidden in a body we named john the body was only a continuation of an agenda now listen very carefully elijah is not a person elijah is a mystery system that is ordained to judge babylon you have to follow me we're coming we're dealing with something serious this night the first manifestation of the spirit of elijah was in noah not even the person elijah it is the spirit that foreruns revival that every time the day of the lord is about to come elijah must be sent it's a spiritual protocol and it was only prophet malachi that saw this are we blessed so the bible tells us that this man elijah shows up every time there is an antichrist system because babylon like jezebel is an antichrist system they, they are not the names of people don't let the bodies deceive you the bodies can come and go but the systems continue are we together you have to understand my discourse so jezebel is a system that always seeks government when babylon and jezebel that she goddess every time she shows up in a region and a territory she's not concerned about any other thing but power because it is until she sits in the seat of governance so jezebel comes and insists that she's the wife of ahab and suddenly the bible says and elijah the tishbite a strange man shows up from nowhere and the entire battle is between two people not two nations elijah and jezebel elijah stops rain destroys the prophets of Baal, and only one person takes it personal jezebel and she insists that i will take off the head of elijah elijah goes to heaven jezebel dies sin two jesus is on earth and suddenly Elijah resurfaces in a strange man eating locusts and wild honey we gave him the name John the Bible says he came in the spirit and the power he came as a continuation of the mission of Elijah suddenly Jezebel resurfaces in a lady called Herodias and the discourse continues are we together when John is done baptizing he finds himself in prison and on a, an anniversary like this a girl dances before the king and they say what do you want she now consults with her mother and says that head that i promised i would take off i want an end to this ministry i want an end to this system because when there is no john there is no open heavens when there is no elijah even the word walks under close heaven i don't even know how i got here that's that's really not what, what i'm talking about but now listen south africa please hear me so jesus began to introduce his his teachings were strange the people followed him and now he gathered and started his conference and they paid attention to the content of his discussion he now began to teach them about another kingdom he was now sharing with them the modus operandi of another kingdom and it was strange his examples the context of his communication in luke chapter 4 when you read 
from verse 15 down the bible says he came to the temple to read as his custom was then it was given to him the scroll of Esaias the prophet he holds it and then he begins to read the messianic prophecy the spirit of the lord is upon me he says for he hath anointed me to preach glad tidings to the meek he had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to set at liberty the captives are we together now then he closes the book and says this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears he looks at a woman with a withered hand and says stretch forth your hand that means i have come as a manifestation of another kingdom now listen please so the bible clearly tells us that there is a contention between two kingdoms you have to understand this there are seven dimensions of the gospel that the bible teaches i'll only give you two of them one the first is called the gospel of salvation please listen this is a believers conference and god is maturing us the gospel of salvation is a revelation of the substitutionary sacrifice in fact is the revelation of the father's love when you teach the gospel of salvation god is father the mediator is the son who is savior and substitute the object the recipient of that love is man are we together now yes so the gospel of salvation is an attempt to reveal the father's love personified in the sacrifice of a man to the end that if we believe that report and receive the son it was apostle john who said this is the record that god hath given us zoe eternal life and then he says listen carefully he says that the, that life was so constructed such that you cannot receive it without the son it is whoever hath the son that also had that life but that is not the only dimension of the gospel listen very carefully the assignment of the gospel of salvation is to initiate you into the kingdom experience it is not supposed to stop the journey i will give you the first and the seventh the seventh is called the gospel of the kingdom now when you teach the gospel of the kingdom god is no longer father alone he is king the saints are no longer weak recipients of love they are ambassadors they are witnesses now mandated the gospel of salvation is the demonstration of god's love to you the gospel of the kingdom is your response back to him so now you become an ambassador mandated to advance the frontiers of the kingdom are we together now if this understanding is barren in the believer nothing else in your kingdom experience will make sense it is purpose that gives value to any experience before we begin to discuss the subject of wealth and abundance and prosperity and increase and all of these things it is important for us to understand the motivation behind the heart of god otherwise every other thing will be valueless Are we blessed so jesus begins to introduce in a mentorship session that we call the beatitudes it was an attempt to begin to introduce the people to kingdom living say kingdom, kingdom. hallelujah now jesus begins to teach and then he now comes to introduce a concept of prayer and he says after this manner he said, pray ye, Abba, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Then he uses a very strange expression, your kingdom come by your will being done in earth, not on earth. The first piece of earth that needs the kingdom is you. This earthen vessel, not just territory. Both you and the territory are all earth so your kingdom come in earth your will be done that's how the kingdom comes when his will is being done are we together now and with many other exhortations he started introducing them to kingdom living by the time jesus is on his way to heaven they had understood the concept of kingdom that they were not people just loitering around the earth 
without an agenda that it was a contention of two kingdoms number one the kingdom that promotes the interest of the Christ number two the kingdom that is antichrist in context this is the beginning of my teaching proper you have to understand this brothers and sisters South Africa Africa the entire globe is a is, is there are not many things happening on earth there are many activities but there are only two agendas the exaltation and the revelation of the Christ and the contention of that agenda every other thing is sandwiched between this your landlord issue your education they are only subsets of a bigger problem you have to understand this the mandate of the church and the believers is to be able to reveal and exalt the Christ to establish his purposes first in the hearts of men then across every strata of human activities this is our corporate agenda and that we belong to a kingdom the Bible says that when a believer encounters the Christ there is a translation do you believe that a literal translation from the kingdom of darkness the Bible says into the kingdom so there is a translation of kingdoms just because you are translated does not mean the other kingdom is null and void it is still there with an agenda are we blessed so Jesus is talking to them about the church now in Matthew 26 and he says who do men say that I the son of man is and they began to debate about who they thought he was and he says now you've walked with me what is your verdict and Peter speaking by the spirit he said I know who thou art thou art Christ the son of the living God and he said flesh and blood hath not revealed this to you is that true but the spirit of my father and this I say unto you thou art Peter and upon this strategy I will build my church the rock is not Peter the rock is not most of these things we talk about the rock is a strategy I will build my church upon a strategy there is a formation and if allowed to be built thus the Bible says the gates of hell so Jesus acknowledges that there is an arsenal that looms around the horizon attempting to sabotage the program of God please follow me let's make sense of our Christian experience apostle why did I find myself suddenly barren you are in the middle of a story you are in the middle of an agenda that predates even your arrival here is a contention of two kingdoms apostle why should I prosper why does the devil attempt to fight me why do I need to be committed to kingdom advance listen anything that we do in the kingdom does not really capture the level of value and impact until it is tied to kingdom come kingdom come is what gives value to every strategy it gives value to your prosperity it gives value to your receiving the anointing it gives value to your evangelism everything that you are doing on its own is only a means to an end what gives life and value is that whatever you are doing is a contribution towards that agenda called thy kingdom come are we together so we're establishing the fact that we are in the midst of two kingdoms they are real kingdoms just because they are spiritual does not mean they do not exist because everything spiritual must express itself in the physical realm that's the technology of creation Hebrews 11 verse 3 the Bible says through faith we understand that the walls were framed they had their formation from a realm and a dimension that is outside of this realm so physical things are only a reflection of what is happening in the realm of the spirit are we together now job the story of job teaches us that things must be finished in the realm of the spirit before they begin here this is true so we have two kingdoms every one of you looking at me those following online from whatever nation we are in a contention between two kingdoms the kingdom of light the kingdom of darkness the system that seeks to exalt the Christ and Babylon 
an antichrist system a system so designed by the intelligence of satan to see to it that the purposes of god are thwarted hallelujah praise the lord are we blessed now let's go back to our initial scripture the bible says third john beloved now john is telling us that god desires us to prosper but he's giving us a secret that we'll study tonight as we pray may god open our eyes to see in the name of jesus he's saying that in an attempt to do well in life there is a side effect that i want to give you a precaution immediately that there is something satan seeks he does not seek money he does not seek your healing or your health he does not seek your business that what satan is after is the souls of men and he's saying that every time you press to prosper there is a side effect and so he's giving a precaution that as you rise make sure you continually check that your soul is also prospering Are we together? <laughs> mm. Matthew, Mark chapter 8, from verse 36 and 37. Mark chapter 8. The Bible says, What shall it profit? Hello, business people, profit. We're discussing profits here, but the commodity is the world and the soul, not pure. Um, what they call it now um, we, we have in Nigeria we have what we call pure water and then we have um, clothes we have all kinds of things when you say you are in business usually you will bring a product my cloth my water my this and the Bible is saying that the real commodity for exchange is the world and your soul look up Jesus is talking profit here so if you're a businessman you should pay attention because he's discussing profit what shall it profit a man so men can profit but he says if you gain the world and lose your soul this is this is not this is not a salvation message this is a business message that in doing business you can gain certain things and lose certain things and he's saying you have not profited if your soul is what you are losing are we blessed so the soul can be traded please listen church of the lord jesus christ you can only buy what can be sold and jesus is saying here that the world can be sold and a man's soul can also be sold are we together and he's saying what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and loses his soul he revealed here the technology of prosperity when you are dealing with the antichrist system that there is a strategy satan knows that men must prosper satan knows that they are desperate that our world is controlled by economic power and so he does not listen the strategy is that he's waiting somewhere in your life and he's only interested in your soul not your product that sooner or later you will be introduced to the negotiation table and he will give you an offer that i can give you the world and all i want oh god you are my god and i will ever praise you oh god you are my god and i will ever praise you i will seek you in the morning I have learned to walk in your ways for step by step. 
you lead me and I will follow you all of my days Matthew chapter 4 please look up there were three temptations that Satan brought to Jesus which is a revelation of how Satan baits men you let me tell you you will never access kingdom wealth if you do not understand what I'm teaching you this is how to make men prosper it's more than a business seminar it's a revelation of an agenda that is bigger than buying and selling hmm. are we best you see what you get in church you don't get this in a bank I was glad when they said unto me now Satan verse 1 Matthew chapter 4 then Jesus was led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil now Satan wants to tempt Jesus two interesting characters and we must study them carefully because the Bible says looking up to Jesus that means understudy him are we together now isn't it amazing that while Jesus was fasting Satan was waiting patiently so sometimes your fast attracts the devil it doesn't <laughs> Jesus is fasting and praying just understand what I'm teaching you afterwards he was hungry verse 3 we're reading to verse 11 the moment he's done fasting ladies and gentlemen the first person he meets is not the Holy Ghost it's not an angel Satan left earth and was waiting for that fast and he engages in a conversation if thou be the son of God that means that the point of Satan's temptation is what God said if God has not spoken he has no business coming he wants to know what God said because his power follows his word we studied it that the word the light of God is the hiding place of his power Walk with me. I'm trying to walk a lot of things and just put them together. Are we together now? The Bible says the tempter came to him and said, If thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Next verse. And Jesus said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. Men of God, I'm sure during the pastor's conference and business conference tomorrow, we'll teach on this. There are three temptations that represent challenges that everybody must overcome the first level is your belly your personal needs he came to him and he said you are hungry remember leave ministry your stomach is making a lot of noise you can turn this stone to bread and Jesus said my obsession about that agenda is bigger than my need that's how he overcame that first temptation now second the Bible says he take it him up you see when you read read intelligently how do you take a man up by holding him satan is holding the word and he's not shaking he's not falling he's saying to me and the word is following him <laughs> now watch this satan taketh him up into the holy city how they entered there and that location is strange because if that location were physical people will come around in all of these locations they were the only two people and set at him on a pinnacle of the temple what was the temptation if thou be the son of god cast yourself down so the temptation of great people is to fall down after all you will be held when you rise high the temptation is carelessness you can fall there will be a way to hold you He sh and it, he said it is written he shall give his angels charge concerning thee and in their hands Satan is quoting this scripture next temptation that is my concern for tonight it is written thou shall not tempt the Lord your God uh -huh. and then verse 8 again now South Africa let's talk the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain the mountain Zechariah talked about the mountain Haggai talked about he said go up the mountain bring wood build me a house 
you don't find wood on the mountain you find wood in the forest so that kind of wood is not the wood you are think there is a kind of wood that is only found on the mountain and we use that wood to build god a house that he may be glorified and the bible says he took him to a mountain mountains talk about spheres of influence you know that and then the bible says he showed him the kingdoms where is that location that you can stand and suddenly see the kingdoms of this world and the glory of them hmm. satan takes jesus to a location where only two of them can go and he stands from there and sees the entire glory of the cosmos and then he says verse 9 all these things what things the kingdoms of this world are we together and the glories of them i will give you this is a businessman look how satan is marketing a product he said see it first let me show you the glories of the cosmos and then he said now that you have seen it the greatest way listen i will give you and all i want in return is fall down and worship so this is how you sell your soul watch this i hope are, are you are, am i is it making sense what i'm teaching you we are finding out how men sell their souls and satan is teaching us that he's a businessman it's interesting that he calls selling giving he didn't say i will sell you the world he says i will give you but all i want in return is fall down and worship me why because the Christ came as the express image of God. Remember his assignment was to run a parallel government. I hope you still remember. And now one comes who is Christ, the manifestation of the Father's glory. And he says, bow, so that I can look at the Father and say, what I failed to do that I was judged from heaven. Now that I have your son, who is the express image of the Father, to bow down does not just mean to bend down. To bow down is to acknowledge lordship. Allow me in experience to be lord. The word lord means absolute owner, absolute manipulator of your life. And I will give you the glories. Do you understand what John is teaching now? That beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper. However, because your prosperity is around the cosmos one day a stranger is going to come and give you an invitation and the context of that invitation is he will show you the glories of the cosmos and he will give you an offer the offer is bow down and i will give you the glories daniel chapter 3 Babylon, the Antichrist government, is about to show us and buttress on this system and how it operates. When you understand this and you stand and say, Lord, I truly give you everything, you will now know what you are saying. Nebuchadnezzar, the king, made an image of an image of not an image of mortar the image was made with gold hmm. the height of it was 90 feet and he set it up in the plain of dura in the province of babylon please follow me patiently next verse nebuchadnezzar now watch this he sets up his image. Notice. Do you know that in the dealings of God with men, you never glorify yourself. The dominion system is a shared system. Watch this. You receive glory by investing your glory in another outside of you. So the father does not glorify himself. He gets his glory from the son. 
the son does not glorify himself he gets his glory from the church in partnership with the holy spirit the church cannot glorify herself she gets her glory from her dominion over the cosmos so this is how the father the son the church is glorified but the antichrist spirit always seeks to promote self so we see that here nebuchadnezzar builds 90 feet using gold take note of that word gold are we working this thing out together and then the bible says look at the people he gathered look at the caliber don't notice that some people here were not invited look at the kind of people who were gathered to come and witness the stature of gold what shall it profit a man He gathered together through the influence of that gold. The influence of that gold image compelled the attention of princes, governors, captains, judges, treasurers, the counselors, sheriffs, all the rulers of the provinces come to the dedication of that image. That means that gold has a voice. It can call certain people. It can call certain systems. He built an image and made a clarion call. And these nobles began to come. Next verse. I hope you know that all these people control different sectors and systems. Instead of calling everybody in a system, you only call the gatekeepers. Because when you capture the gatekeepers in a system, everyone must follow through. The devil is not going to go around the oil and gas or going around the mining looking for everyone one by one. That, that's too laborious. All he needs is to find out who are the gatekeepers. And he will call them for a meeting. Nebuchadnezzar is not just calling the citizens in Babylon. He's calling certain noble people to come and honor an image. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Let's read, please. It says, Then an herald cried aloud, To you it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages, uh -huh, that at what time ye hear the sound, do you see the role that worship and the music ministry plays in as giving a sign? That it is when the music ministry fronts this, all nations bow. Wow. <laughs> when you hear the sound of the cornet, the flutes, the harp, and all of these things together, ye fall down. You now see what Satan was trying to get Jesus to do? Fall down and bow before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up next verse it says whoso falleth not and worshipeth not the same hour will be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace what do they call financial catastrophe they call it a meltdown it is fire that melts things down that your failure to bow down to a system can have an effect fire you will be exposed to fire seven so when everybody heard let me run through this they now fell down verse 8 at that time certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews nine they speak unto the king they said live forever ten don't mind me i'm just summarizing it that when all this happened go to verse 11 the bible says you said this and that and that would happen verse 12 be patient the whole chapter is what is important it says there were certain south africans yes sir yes sir no don't generalize there are still seven thousand who have not bowed to bear it says there are certain south africans 
you have set them over the affairs of the province of babylon shadrach meshach abednego he says this man please go back verse 12 this man O king have not regarded thee they serve not thy gods nor worship the golden image yet they are rulers in the province so what technology did they use they are rising not by bowing can you pray in the spirit for just one minute certain south africans that said we will not bow yet we will rise we are a people men and women we we are not just money mongers we are not just businessmen we are not just men of god we understand that there is a government that we pledge our allegiance to just because we live and walk in the cosmos don't confuse it please sit down Bastati. We're discussing something very serious. Please take it down for me again. The Bible says Nebuchadnezzar, the God of that system, was angry. Who are these men? You are doing ministry without compromise. Who are these men? I hear you don't bribe as you do business. Hold on. Who are these men? I hear you preach whether things are favorable or not. The Bible says, listen, their refusal to bow created a reaction. Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded, he said, bring them. They were brought before the king. There are two kinds of invitations. You can come before Pharaoh to be lifted, or you can come before Nebuchadnezzar to be judged. The Bible says, but the people that do know their God. The first requirement for business is not value, it's encounter. It says, I hear you do not serve my gods, nor worship the golden image I have set up 15. Now, if you are ready, I'm giving you another chance. Join the system. Don't fight it, he's saying. I'm giving you it. I don't want you to feel frustrated because my anger is harsh. Do not call upon the name of the Lord while you preach. Do not let any worship song play around your house. Do not let people hear the name Jesus around your business vicinity. Next verse. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O king, when it comes to this matter, we have respected you, but you have touched a nerve. We are about to show you we are not just workers in your kingdom. We are only using the system to serve another government. There's an army rising up. Someone please play for me. Come on. Someone should be able to play that for me. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. They will break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain, yeah. Break every chain. Please sit down. Please sit down. Please sit down. My God, I sense a strong anointing here. Please give me a little volume, my friend. Now listen. He said, Oh King, when it comes to our civil duties, we will honor you. 
but when you touch our loyalty to this government we are not just workers Kali Parus we are not just workers I may be a clerk but I'm not just a clerk I am one in fraternity with a government higher than the government of any state Mighty the chains fall Hallelujah. Please sit down. Let's deal with this thing. Please sit down. It says, We are this determined to see His glory revealed that our God is able to deliver us from the effect that the system will bring on our serving Him. It says, And we know He will deliver us. Next verse. But if not, be it known unto thee that this fraternity is not for things, that I'm not just serving him for promotion. The context of my is I listen, this right here is faith. Faith is not only the power to receive. Faith is also the power to lay down. Time will fail me. The Bible says to talk of Gideon and Jephthah and Barak. Men who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, shut the mouth of lions. The Bible says women who received their dead to life. And it says others died without receiving the promise. It's still called all of them elders that obtained a good report. Listen, South Africa. If the context of your Christianity is until lifting comes, until promotion comes, you must get to a point where you say, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. I have made up my mind is a commitment that my children will serve my God, that my business will serve my God, that my... There will be a generation in South Africa that preserves the heritage of revival and power. It's good to make money. It's good to rise. It's good to increase. But our children must call upon the God of the fathers. I hear the chains fall. Please sit down. Sit down. I sense a strong anointing in this place. Please sit down. Please sit down. The Bible says there is a consequence when you make up your mind that will not do this kind of business. We are not talking about oil and gas. Now watch this please. When you read on, please go to verse 20. Let's hurry up. That is the last verse. He commanded as a result, bind these people, throw them into a system that's uncomfortable. Throw them into a, he said, bind them, bind their productivity, tie their hands, tie their capacity to go forward and throw them. Was it not the hands of Samson that was tied? Every time the devil wants to ravage a people, he ties their hands. Listen now. Tie their hands. Tie their feet. Throw them into fire that was made seven times hotter. Increase the rent and she would change her mind. Increase the bills. He will renegotiate his passion for God. Years ago, you vowed that I will serve him, and now he increases the heat, and you begin to negotiate. I I know that I came to you and you said I must sleep with you for the job. I said, God forbid, but now is that door still open? Because the pressure on me 
he said tie their hands tie their feet throw them into fire 21 be patient we're almost there these men were bound in their coats their hearts their garments they were cast into the midst of the fire 22 Shila Parus Kadabaranda. That this fire was so hot, the flames slew those who put them inside. Next verse. They were all within 24. Then the king was astonished. And he rose up and spake and said, Did we not cast three men bound into this system? They answered, yes, O king, it is true. However, 25, I see four men. And the form of the fourth is like the son of God. Keep this scripture. But Isaiah 43 and verse 1 and 2 says, Fear not, I have redeemed you. It says, I have called you by name, you are mine. It says, when you walk through the waters, it will not destroy you. Through the river, it will not drown you. It says, when you walk through fire, I will be with you. 26, we are reading to 30 and we are done. Nebuchadnezzar came to the mouth of the furnace and spake. And this is what he said. Pastor Felix, Mama Felix, house of treasures ye servants of the most high come forth come hither and they came out in the midst of the fire 27 this miracle happened in the presence of the princes the governors and everybody he says watch this i want to show you something he says being gathered together he saw this man whose bodies the fire had no power he saw men whose business the fire had no power he saw ministries whose whose bodies the fire had no power verse 28 Blessed be the name of the Lord. It says, And Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who had sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve or worship any god except their own god. As a result, this is all God is looking for. Not your money, not your business. I make a decree that every people, nation, language, which speak anything against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces, their houses, etc., etc. Thirty. Then the king <laughs> then Babylon then South Africa promoted beloved I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in hell but even as thy soul sit down Please look up. Please listen to me. We're going to pray. There are many people on earth who have transacted this kind of business. The business is always transacted in a lonely place where you are given the world I can know even though I was not there because 
when I see you rising, I don't look at what is empowering you. I look at your soul. Listen, it is impossible under this system to prosper even as thy soul prospers. No, no. I know you are prospering the Antichrist way when you suddenly get a promotion and there's no longer time for prayer watch this sit down let me show you how it works suddenly branches have been opened your name is everywhere it is not that an occultic person has to come directly it's a system it strangles your spiritual life and allows other things grow that's how you know you are fraternizing with babylon and you say, when I had five members, I could pray, I could fast. But now, God, I don't have time. I need to catch a flight. I need to travel around the world. There is a demand on my ministry. And heaven watches. You are prospering at the expense of your soul. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Lord, I loved you until that relationship came. I, I, I'm too committed to this guy. I, I can't give you 30 minutes, one hour. Lord, you, you know how relationship is in our generation. I, I am desperate for marriage. I'm desperate for growth. Please, can your presence wait for me? When I need an emergency, I will come to you. And so, under this system, God becomes a ladder that we use to get money. A ladder we use to get fame. A ladder we use to get anointing. It is fraternity with Babylon. Are we together? I pledge allegiance to the Lamb with all my heart, with all I am. I will seek to honor his commands I pledge allegiance to the land if it's not in your presence if it's not by your hands if it's not by your spirit don't let me have it for everything I need is in you if it's not in your presence I'm not that desperate if it's not by your hands if it's not by your spirit don't let me have it For everything I need is in you. What shall it profit a man? If your ministry is spreading around the world, dear man of God, and you are making a name and making the headlines, but I check your soul, and the last time you prayed was two months because you are busy preaching. Ministry can be an idol. Anointing can be an idol. Hear me. This is how we prosper. <laughs> Lord, bless me and see what I will do. God says, I don't need to bless you. I see already. You know, people, people disrespect money. People say, well, money cannot, if you are joking, money has real power. It can change men. Money can relocate you from the will of God into somewhere you have no business being. Money can introduce relationships into your life that help to sit on your soul while it dies. Hallelujah. See, let me tell you. When you are walking with God and God starts to deal with you, whether you understand what he's saying or not, believe him. You can be walking on God, increase me. 
and God looks at you and says there is lust in your heart you say me God forbid God you are talking like that because you don't have a car yet of course who will come to you in that state and so God is saying before you disappoint yourself trust my all-seeing eye I hope you like what I'm sharing tonight. Listen to me. I show you there are people who may not be featured in the move of God in the days that come. And I don't mean this in a sarcastic way. Yes. John 2, the old wine has finished. We were in the feast and the wine Yet the business still looks like it is growing. Yet ministry is still expanding, but the wine is finished. But there were a group of people in that feast. They said, something is wrong with this formation. Where is the Lord of the feast? He has been thrown somewhere in the congregation while we receive the praises. And they came to Jesus and said, we know something is wrong with this formation. The wine has finished. Let me show you something. This is prophetic and then we'll pray. Revelations chapter 18. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm about to pray. I just saw a wind. There are two people. The power of God is coming on them with a loud shout. Please bring them out. I just saw a wind just blowing this way. It's a very strong impartation. It's coming on two of them now. Please bring them. Don't let me have it. Revelations 18. Everything I need is in you. Verse 2. Please look up. We're about to pray. Your pastor told you your life would not be the same. And he cried mightily with a strong voice saying Babylon the great is fallen this is a prophetic word to the body of Christ is a prophetic word to the church it's not a word of condemnation it is the announcing of the new season because the jealousy of the bridegroom is drawing him closer watch this Babylon the great is fallen is fallen and is become the habitations of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean bird next verse for the nations watch this have drunk the wine of her fornication watch this it says the kings of the earth have done what committed fornication with her who is her babylon and the merchants the rich men of the earth they was rich through the abundance of her delicacy that this is the source of the mysterious risings in spite of the fact that they disobey the laws of the kingdom there is a fraternity in the realm of the spirit that is greater than buying and selling next verse I heard another voice from heaven saying, South Africa, come out of her. Come out. Come out, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not her plagues. Five, for her sins have reached the heavens, and God had remembered her iniquities. Verse six. Let's go to verse eight. Therefore, shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly born with fire. For strong is the Lord who judgeth her. Nine. Verse nine. Now, the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and live deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning 
verse 10 seeing afar off for the fear of our torment saying alas alas that great city that mighty city how soon will it fall in one hour shadows in one hour next verse there's something i want to show you the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her for no man buy yet of her merchandise anymore a day will come the spirit of revival will stop men will say no this can't be it god is so much bigger than me Verse 12. Now, let's look up. This is what this businesswoman called Babylon sells. We are examining all her products. Look at what she sells. Ready? She sells gold. That's where Nebuchadnezzar got it from. She sells silver. She sells precious stones. She sells pearl, fine linen, purple, silk. All manner of ivory, most precious wood, brass, iron marble 13 cinnamon odors she sells anointing she sells frankincense she sells wine she sells oil she sells flour read with me now and wheat aha uh -huh. and bees south africa and sheep and horses what does she sell again and chariots and slaves and she sells even souls so if i want influence i can come to her and say give me fame and she will give you the souls of men and men will flock after you i come with a voice of prophecy the bible says blow the trumpet in zion sound if you did not hear it is because you are not in zion please listen to me there is a system that is eating into our children it's into structures satan's agenda is that one day there will rise a generation that can no longer call upon the name of the Lord. The Bible says, and Adam knew his wife, and she bore Seth, and men began again to call upon the name of the Lord. Listen, the heritage of Africa was built upon the blood of many who served God with their life. They were not as educated. They were not as enlightened. They did not even have depth of revelation like we do. But one thing they had was their allegiance unbending in life and in death. Africa, wake up. We are about losing a heritage. It may not be in our lifetime, but so that we don't transit this realm with pain. Where is the God of our Father that your child one day will say, Who is Jesus? Why do I need him? I'm already blessed. Because you taught him that everything about Jesus is just to give you money. And now that I have money without him, why do I need him? Please listen to me. I show you a key that will make you lay gold as dust. Is it not a law in this kingdom that we keep things by releasing them? Hear me. I believe in this place tonight the hand of God is coming on someone here. I just saw the angel of the Lord. Just move here. Please bring them out right now. Step into a new season. Please bring them out. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Bring them out. You have won it all for me. Death could not hold you down. You are the reason, King. Seated in majesty. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. Tonight's teaching is not a call to tear down people. Tonight's teaching is not for you to start pointing your hands. No, no, that's not how the spirit of the Christ works. Tonight's teaching is not a tell them teaching. Tonight's teaching is a call to come out of her. A call to see the excellency of the prosperity of your soul. Listen. I can know who prospered you by checking the health of your soul when I find out that the higher you rise the more your knee touches the ground I know you have met his majesty when I see that the more an appointment comes the more your hunger the more your desperation madam I don't know who this woman is we are not praying tonight but in the name of Jesus I'm seeing oil being poured on your head and the Lord is saying, I should tell you, he's shifting you to a new level in the spirit. I release that grace upon you. Step into a new level now in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen. Listen. Please let me announce to you, not everyone has bowed to bear. There are people who their hunger and their passion has driven them to realms of power, realms of grace authentic dimensions of power Hallelujah. I'm desperate for you Hallelujah. I'm lost without you that's the anthem of a generation Listen, South Africa, house of treasures, your pastor discerning by the spirit put forth this meeting as a clarion call to wake the army of the Lord Jesus, to let them know that there is a fraternity that is going on in the earth. Babylon, please take it hard for me and let him, my dear friend from US, somewhere in this meeting, you are going to blow this shofar for us. It's going to come by the spirit. We will shake this building as a sound that we're sending to South Africa that there is a rising of the new. There is a rising of men mighty and strong in the spirit. Another kind of man. Listen. I vowed and I told the Lord even before he began to lift me lord whatever will take my attention from you i don't care what it is let it go fast and as i'm standing here god sees my heart that i'm telling him what is fame listen we have to be very careful some of these mundane things can distract us to a point where we will lose authentic power the grace over territories not just churches not just cities well done thou good and faithful servant you become a ruler over territories an anointing is coming on you this dear lady in the name of Jesus the Lord is shifting you I don't know who you are but you are stepping into a new dimension in the realm of the spirit listen your life will never believe me when I tell you you will encounter a grace that will so shift you to dimensions in the spirit listen 
My message tonight is very simple. We are going to discuss other aspects of the kingdom. This is not all. But tonight, in addition to the graces and the teachings, it is a call to return. It is a call. Leave the issue of business now. Leave the issue of I want speed. It will come. Tonight is you. You are the commodity yourself. Man of God, forget about ministry and focus on his presence. That's the key to growth. The key to running is staying. Apostle, I want power. I want growth. I want to prophesy. I know you are sincere. But that drive will only lead you to perdition. In the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. In the beginning of your business, God. Not money. In the beginning of ministry, God. In the beginning of marriage, God. He is called Alpha Omega. Listen, that any relationship in my life that is strangling the health of my soul is too expensive. It's not worth it. There's no such thing as we were born together. No, sir. You don't have to condemn people and insult people and cause trouble. But it's time. It says when Elijah called all of them, he called the prophets of Baal. He says, if God be God, let him be God. If Baal be God, let him be God. And then he says, choose you this day somewhere in scripture whom you will serve. Man of God, choose you this day. Businessman, choose you this day. My dear precious sister, my dear precious brother, choose you this day. As for me, I've made my choice that we live for His Majesty. I love Him more than preaching. Believe me when I tell you, I love Him more than anointing, more than power. I will throw this ministry a thousand times to honor His presence. If He tells me this is my last sermon as a preacher, I stand before the God of heaven as I close this Bible. I will never open it to preach again. That's how much I love him. Simon Bajona, lovest thou me more than this? We're about to cry in this place. Listen. Tonight is not a night of, I am an apostle. I am a prophet. Tonight is a night where we will come and say, Lord, I'm tired of lying. Search my heart. It's not a call to condemnation. It's a call to intentional reflection. For if it is, listen, the glory of God comes to confirm that his patterns have been followed. When his patterns are violated like Cain, the sacrifice will be. So we're going to pray. I may not have the time. My friend, lift your hands. Step into a new level in the spirit. A grace is coming upon you. You're a young man, but in the name of Jesus, the Lord will use you mightily, even in this nation. He's calling us deeper, 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 deeper. He's calling us deeper, deeper. Salabaranda Salatia Sabas. Listen, in the next five minutes. Please forget about who is sitting by your left and right. You are going to cry before his majesty and say, Lord, search my heart. I'm not here to lie. I'm not here to pretend. In all sincerity, I come before you, the God of my salvation. I come with my heart broken and contrite that if there be any way and any pattern that negates your workings in my life, 
I come before God ask for a purging and a cleansing that brings power. South Africa, lift your voice and let's cry to the heavens. Selada sabanda prakato saladia. Engreteko sadabara kotosiata simahasia. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence living in me. This is my daily bread. This is my daily bread. Your very word spoken to me. Where is that generation? Lift your hands, lift your voice. And I am desperate for you. Let it be a cry for heart. And I am lost without you. And I am desperate for you. And I am Hallelujah. Just give me a few minutes tonight and then we're done. Who is Grace? Grace. I'm hearing the name Grace. Who is that? Grace. Grace. You're wearing like a green head tie, something green. You didn't tie your head completely. Who is that? Is there someone like that? What's your name, my dear? Grace. Where are you coming from? You are from? Please give her the mic. What, what do you have to do with um, Congo DRC? That's where I'm from. Sir. Where are you from? Congo. Congo. I want to pray for you because you are stepping into a new anointing. I stretch my hands. I bring you a grace that shifts you to a new level. May your life never be the same. Never be the same. Never be the same. You can know that you met him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, please hear me. I know that we don't have all the time tonight, but listen, tomorrow and Friday, I want you to come with all your families, even if it's for you to sit on the roof. Please find a way. I may not have the time tonight to minister to the sick and all of that, but the Lord sent me here to come and join hands with the mighty men and women of God in this city and this nation to lift up the banner of the name and the grace of the Christ to see to it that the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ hallelujah is there a place called is it Pumalanga something like that is, is that a name I'm sorry if I don't pronounce it correctly Pumalanga What's that? A nation, a state? Who is from there? Hold on, please. That person, there are two of them. The power of God will come on them now. Bring them from that region. That region. Bring them. 
Alis Karu Salam Brady Salukata. We're rounding up. Please bring them. We're rounding up. We're from the east. Listen, this is a ministry of signs and wonders. God, it, it is not, I'm a man. Look at me. Please look at me. I am a man. We are only men who have been helped by God. And the Lord uses us like this, not to show that we are superhuman in ourselves. Our divinity and the extraordinary manifestation is a testament of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. It should cause men to see him more than seeing us. This is how it works. And I, the Bible says, if I be lifted from the earth, I will draw all men to myself. I will draw all men to myself. I will draw all men to myself. Hallelujah. One of these ladies wearing hats in front. The power of God is coming on one of them. Please let me have these ladies in front. I just saw wind. Listen, if you are a pastor here, believe me, you are going to contact a grace in this conference that will so shift your ministry to a dimension of grace and power. It is by the Spirit of God. Listen, listen, please look at me. My teaching tonight may be a bit hard, but this is the chastening of the Spirit. It prunes us to bring us to a place of order. The apostolic, see, the apostolic anointing is not even a preaching anointing. It's a governmental grace. It governs the coordinates of the truths of scripture. It ensures that a territory and a generation works within the jurisdiction of balance. The assignment of the apostolic and the prophetic is that through the sacrifice of alignment, we access the speakings of God as a portion for a generation and ensure that its dispensing is done with accuracy and as intended by the Father. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Now please hear me, that when you go back home tonight, let it be a cry in your heart and say, Lord, I joined the midwives that will birth the new in South Africa. But hear me, South Africa, I bring you a prophetic word. Before you believe a man, find out about him. Don't just believe carelessly. Listen, I was sleeping after we were done having breakfast and I saw a vision I saw a vision of a woman about to give birth and that woman is South Africa hear me there is and this will start from the month of August this year there is a strange shift that is coming to the body of Christ within this territory please hear what I am telling you it's a double-edged sword it will come both to lift and to bring down. It is not the desire of God that anything goes wrong. Listen, don't celebrate when things go wrong with the body of Christ. The goal is the body of Christ lifted. So you must understand what I'm teaching you. Are we together now? It is true that we are at different levels. It is true that our levels of sacrifices and alignment is true that here and there flesh may be prevalent in people but hear me Christ is still in the midst of South Africa and let me speak to you more than pointing fingers we must now begin to point our attention to his majesty because as we behold him that's where we are changed hallelujah can we pray two prayer points and we're done for tonight prayer point number one Lord a vessel in me a vessel it's true that God is prospering us but tonight's teaching is even as your soul prospers father 
I, repentance is not a language for sinners. Listen, the word repent is not necessarily a sinner's language. Repent is a pattern. It is the system by which we become more like Christ. Paul prayed and said, my little children of whom I travail, on ice be formed. The formation of the Christ have a mystery called repentance. Going to live one pray. Say, Lord, search my heart and help me. I desire to walk genuinely with you in truth. Lift your voice and pray. Genuinely. Genuinely. Yes, sir. Now, please just let me five minutes and we're done. My dear friend from the U.S. is just going to play something. Just play this song. And as he's playing, I'd like you to pray. And while we pray... I'm just going to speak over your life and we're done for tonight. Yes, sir. Lift your voice and make sure you pray. Lord, in this move of your spirit that is coming to South Africa, this financial renaissance, this apostolic and prophetic move of the spirit, I open up my heart and I declare that I am available and I am usable. let there be a restoration of the prayer fire upon our altars let there be a restoration of hunger and passion for God upon our altars let there be a restoration of a determination to live for him a determination to be reflectors of his glory and power and grace We will not bow. Here comes a generation that will not bow to Baal. Here comes a generation that is uncompromising. Here comes a generation that will stay to the end. Here comes a generation that will last to the end. Hallelujah. Now please hear me. I know that our time is gone, but I must pray one prayer. The Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit and I'm seeing several chains several chains on people this is what I see just one prayer I want to pray because it will be unfair for you to return back with that chain no what then is the excellency of his presence now the Lord is that spirit the Bible says you are about to taste and see that the Lord is good not only to believe I want to pray a prayer for you now listen please as I pray this prayer the power of the Holy Ghost please help that lady the power of the Holy Ghost will come upon some of you and it is to break chains this is not impartation this is to break chains so that you are free hallelujah help them please I want to pray listen you will never be the same never at the count of three I want you to shout that name Jesus and as you shout that name, many of you age long captivity that has, see, every challenge is at the mercy of the grace that confronts it. Please listen to me. Right now in the name of Jesus, I come to you South Africa by the rod of a higher priesthood. And I stand in the name of Jesus in partnership with all the graces in this place. I declare at the count of three that every force that is not of the Christ and every manipulation of darkness tying down the destinies of men it's time that you go now at the count of three you shout Jesus one two three be free now be free now please help them help them please I command chains be broken chains be broken chains be broken Chains. Release their destinies. Release their destinies. South Africa be released by the power of the Holy Ghost. I bring you the ministry of the Holy Ghost. Be free in the name of Jesus.
Father, let close doors tonight. I speak to doors that have been closed on account of your determination to, re to remain for Christ. I speak to those doors. Hear me. A father, be open. Be open. Listen, many of you will return tomorrow morning or evening with shock and wonder. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Now please listen to me. Tomorrow, a pastor, if you're, you're the shepherd, the angel over this house, if you will allow, I trust that tonight, tomorrow night will be a miracle service. And pastor, um, um, apostle Felix, please, if you will allow me, I want to plead with you at the permission of your dear man of God, I'd like you to write the list of things that must live your life forever. Please hear me. And if, if he comes and allows it, then fine. By evening, you're going to come with it here. Let's know whether God lost his power or is it... The... Listen, we want to deal with issues in people's lives and call it and close that door once and for all hallelujah but hear me you will be unfair to yourself some of you as you are standing now you are thinking of your loved ones and you are saying why wasn't she here why wasn't he here some of you have even seen your loved ones in dreams being liberated thank god the conference is not done Please, whatever calls you will have to make this is more than house of treasures meeting house of treasures is the donkey that his majesty is riding upon to speak is a holy convocation over your nation over this city to see to it that his majesty be revealed I open you up to realms of vision tonight in the name of Jesus I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that you return tonight with a fresh hunger for the things of God. In the name of Jesus, you will return with strange miracles by the Spirit. I bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. And hear me, because we are dealing with a financial conference, I'll be sharing with you a few things, but there has to be a token that represents that conference. Therefore, I declare to you, between tonight, and now, please believe in the prophetic. Please believe in it. Just because here and there, there are imbalances, you will make a big mistake despising prophesying. The Bible says in Ezra chapter 4 and verse 16, it says the elders of the land build it through the prophesying of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo. Hallelujah. And then the Bible says, I think that should be verse 15 or so. 6 verse 14. Ezra chapter 6 and verse 14. I want to speak over your life and we're done. Ezra 6 and 14. Read with me. One to read. And the elders of the Jews built it. And they prospered. How? Through the prophesying of Haggai the prophet. And Zechariah the son of Edo. And they built it and finished it. According to the commandment. Please stop there. God commands, but we speak to make it happen. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, I stand by the God of heaven who is a lifter of men. I'm prophesying to someone between tonight and tomorrow, return with a strange financial testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ, we take advantage of systems and structures and in the name of Jesus, I call upon the God of Jeshurun, the one who rides upon the wings of the wind. And I decree and declare, return with strange testimonies.
glory of the Lord is in this place. This is what I saw concerning this conference. Hear me and hear me well. Tonight, you have changed level completely. Except you 